Alô, oui, bonsoir. I'm Diva Rosal and ça c'est le deuxième channel and jeudi hein, nous allons parler de film The Woman King. Today we're going to be talking about the film The Woman King. Now, to be honest with you, I watched this video about a month ago and I was supposed to do this video a long time ago, then I got really really sick and then I genuinely forgot. So, I apologize. For those of you guys who haven't seen the movie yet, I highly suggest that you do see it so right off the bat I genuinely liked the movie it was a very good movie really good cinematography really nice music I absolutely loved it okay I thought it was amazing and it's interesting because I had absolutely no idea walking into the theater literally leading up to this that there was so much controversy about the woman king okay I did not know that so many people were upset about it so many people walked off of the cast so many people were boycotting the the movie until literally a couple of days ago therefore I decided that even though I am a little late I'm still going to do this video because there's a lot of things that need to be discussed that a lot of people don't genuinely understand when it comes to Africans part in the slave trade and most importantly why this movie was important and also why a lot of the critiques on this particular movie are racist and misogynistic misogynoirist is that how you say it there's a lot of themes of misogynoir Okay, like I'm gonna be touching on a lot of topics in this video and typically this is a video that would be on my main channel So just a little tidbit. I have two other channels I have my main channel Which is my the mademoiselle channel where I talk about rants reaction and commentary based on black social issues And I have a personal channel as well where I do my personal content vlogs advice and things like that So technically this would be on that channel But I decided to do it on this channel because the woman king is based on an all-woman army me that was really active back in the day in the Daomi kingdom and if you guys are not aware Daomi is actually modern day Benin and if you're also not aware a lot of Haitians in particularly come from Benin so I was like you know what we're gonna touch on this because a lot of people depending on if they actually truly do their history properly also look at Haitians and other Caribbean people like oh it was your people that sold our people off to slavery because a lot of people that also came from Benin aka Daomi also ended up in America so there's a lot to unpack here so get your tea get your snacks get everything you need because it's gonna be an interesting one another point I'd like to add is Toya if you guys do not know about Toya Toya was the woman that taught Jean-Jacques de Saline how to fight which is one of our Haitian forefathers and she was also taught to be part of the Agoji tribe which is the tribe that the woman king focuses on so for the most part a lot of Haitians were really happy to see this movie we were proud to see this we went to go see our shit and we went home okay so seeing all of this controversy I'm just like whoa and then a lot of people are like coming at Haitians and coming at other people that are happy to see the movie and they're like oh you guys shouldn't be happy they sold you off to slavery da 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 these Africans they ain't shit da 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 and then you have Africans feeling bad you know they feel some type of second hand I guess responsibility because of what their ancestors did and now you have white people sitting here throwing gasoline on the fire when realistically they're the ones that wrote this movie they're the ones that's writing these articles and they're the ones that's perpetuating legitimate misinformation and withholding information therefore we gonna get into it so I apologize in advance if this video is all over the place because I've been itching to do this video for a while like I said I was sick I really was and then I literally genuinely forgot and then I got reignited again as I was looking at my notes that I had my assistant do for this video I kid you not y'all but one I didn't get it everything I was reading just looked one-sided biased I didn't get it and I'm gonna just say this flat out I feel like a lot of this controversy has a lot to do with the fact that white people are tired of being blamed for the slave trade that happened all so long ago so now they're trying to write these stories and write these narratives and spin these tales about how no 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 okay well we enslaved you guys and we did so much horrible things to you guys that we still continue to do and we still benefit from the things that our ancestors do but you know your ancestors helped us do what we did and it just doesn't make any sense to me because are you really 
fucking kidding me? Like, are we really gonna play that goddamn card? Let's be real, we all know what the fuck the white people did, okay? I don't think it's okay to blame white people today for what their ancestors did, just like I do not think it is okay for people to be sitting here dragging Africans for what their ancestors did. What people need to understand is that we cannot compare the actions of what people did way back in the day to what our standards of humanity is today in 2022. We cannot, okay? The ideologies were different, bouts of survival were different. Just the fact that they didn't even see race and color and, you know, tribes and stuff the way that we do is completely different and needs to be taken into consideration, okay? So that's something that I need everyone to keep in mind before you watch the rest of this video. Now, I will say the real reason that a lot of people always come at white people and will forever come at white people, <laughs> including myself, is that white people benefit from all of the shit that they've done, okay? White people are literally the sole benefactors of all of the chaos they have created for literally ever. And they don't care to do anything about it, but still sit here and create more chaos. Even if the whole theory is, okay, well, black people helped them, which technically they did, which I'm gonna get into in a little bit. The point is black people don't benefit from it. Black people did not sit there and say, okay, let's sell our own people. That's not how it went down. And if you really want to go see The Woman King or you go see any other movie and you think that's supposed to educate you on African culture, on who we are as a people, on history as a whole, in the words of my mother, I'm sorry, boo boo. That is not going to teach you a damn thing. I don't understand how the fuck a movie written by white people, literally with a white narrative, most likely directed by black people with all black actors, first of all, wasn't sus. Again, like I said, I did like the movie, but it's something we need to take into consideration. I can't believe that people let all this outrage get sparked when for the most part, a lot of black people were happy about the movie until they did some research. Not even research, let's point it out. There's a difference between looking up and research. Research actually takes legitimate time. You have to actually look at verified documents. And then there's looking it up for two seconds. And everything that I'm saying in this video, you don't even have to research. You could have just looked up, why did Africans participate in the transatlantic slave trade? When did Benin become colonized? Like A lot of the things I'm gonna answer in this video, you could have looked up, but instead, a lot of people took the white narrative and ran with it. Again, I love the movie. I think it was really, really great. But a lot of people are very upset with the fact that this movie negates the truth about the slave trade. And you know, Daomi was not the good guy. Agoji, they were horrible. They were literally taking people from villages and burning it down to the ground and taking slaves and selling slaves. So let's get into that. If you really sit here and you think anybody of any tribe of any country sat there and sold their own people, you're sadly mistaken. More than likely, not even more than likely, the truth is when it came to anybody, whether we're talking about Africa, Europe, Asia, the world was always at war, okay? Everybody was at war all the time. People, countries, always invading other countries, okay? This is something we all know this is basic history okay because they wanted more land they wanted more influence everybody wanted to extend their presence okay everybody wanted to enforce their own type of agenda okay this is like of course 1400 1500 1600 type of thinking go into these villages go into these towns go into these countries whatever the case may be conquer it whatever the case may be get what we need to get and get the fuck out if we can conquer the land we conquer the land if we are stronger we are better we are smarter our religion is is better so anybody that does not believe that they gotta go so yeah we don't own up north we gotta get up north we got we gotta make ourselves know we gotta make ourselves present and realistically if we really think about it that hasn't changed too much today it's just done in a different way but anyways basically that's what everyone was doing everybody was fighting everybody was doing this that and a third but what people don't necessarily talk about is the fact that if you wanted to save yourself from such invasions you had to do some things that weren't pleasant and that's where slavery kicks in okay when these Europeans especially discovered Africa they saw an amazing opportunity they were like yo they got gold they got nice land you know the people look a little unruly we want to do something about them but you know they look like they got some good shit over there and they thought well they look a little stupid too you know we're white they're black but clearly that's not what they were saying because race wasn't necessarily a thing back then it was I mean I guess that's where it started to manifest but for the most part they were just like we're light they're 
they're dark they look dirty they look tribal they, they don't even speak our language so clearly we're gonna be able to bypass whatever the fuck they got set for us because we're dominant they didn't expect the african people to actually be able to fight the fuck back this is where agoji and a lot of other military type of people in africa kicked in a lot of the times where europeans were sitting here trying to invade these countries africans was not playing that shit okay in senegal in particular they saw european ships and they would literally shoot them down with poison arrows so eventually it got to a point where the europeans was like okay um clearly these little niggers they're not as dumb as we think they are so we're, we're gonna have to negotiate we're gonna have to do something because like they're killing us and this is just senegal with the poison arrows okay there was different countries that were defending themselves in different ways they may not have had guns and cannons but people also refuse to believe that just because you don't have a gun you can't win a fight like it, it, does, it doesn't make sense you could win a fight without a gun just because your opponent has a gun doesn't mean you're gonna lose and the africans proved that the haitians proved that and of course i know there's gonna be people in the comment section oh well it, it's because they did voodoo and they're demonic people you're brainwashed get the fuck out my comment section i don't got time for you okay we're not doing that today the point that i'm trying to get at is africans were very very smart okay and i i'm talking about the whole entire continent they were very very smart they were prepared they had military they had literally trained fighters people at the borders people that were defending their land at all costs defending their tribes at all costs so when the europeans came they were not prepared for that so what they did was they decided okay we're gonna establish trade with them we're gonna you know say okay you know in exchange for this and that we don't give them this and that so say it was like um we'll give them english goods for whatever goods they have over here and then it slowly became hey do you guys have any niggers y'all don't give a fuck about that pass over here and that's where that shit began now of course it clearly was not as fast or as you know neat as i'm putting it but what needs to be taken into consideration is of course if you're met with that type of proposition at first you're gonna be like uh no for what why would i do that but also back in the day they can't just go wake up and work at fucking amazon their source of currency is agriculture trading and sometimes trading is people and at this point the europeans are they're in the shits okay they outside they invited to the cookout so since they here since they on the land since now we have peace treaties with these europeans they did not know their motive okay they're just sitting here trading european goods and whatever and now all of a sudden they want human cargo so now they're like oh uh okay we'll see what we could do and then eventually i i would assume okay because i i kind of read on this from different countries of what they did you're gonna have to look into this yourself because different countries handled this different ways there's some people that held them off for a very long time when it comes to benin and the movie that the woman king is actually based on they were protecting their people point blank period more than likely they did not sell their own people the people in the benin daomi they they was fine they would sell off other people in neighboring villages opposing villages like the oil empire that was what the movie was based off that was their like opposer person whatever i said opposer that was their enemy empire okay it was the oil empire so say they they go into the oil empire they kill whoever in the war and then they take back casualties those people would be sold is that okay no i'm gonna say that again is that okay no so I live like borderline Newark and Harrison, right? If I don't like people in fucking Kearney, can I just pull up in Kearney and be like, all right, off with their heads and then sell them off to freaking people in Britain? No! 2022, that sounds fucking insane. But back in the 1400s, the 1500s, the 1600s, the 1700s, that is normal shit. And for them, it was a bout of survival. Sell or be sold. That's what it was. If you don't give us human cargo, we're gonna start taking y'all motherfuckers by force. Therefore, this is where the a goji tribe was born as a form of defense and that goes with a lot of different military and different type of subset militia that you see in africa and the caribbean in america whatever the case may be because it became ridiculously necessary these colonizers were sitting here doing all types of goofy shit and spitting narratives and being sneaky getting their way into these black kingdoms into these black places trying to act 
like they gave a fuck okay wanted to trade with the african people but in actuality their motive was to get human cargo i really highly doubt that black people wanted to sell their own people i highly doubt that they thought about the consequences of selling their people and having them shipped to god knows where and sadly ultimately benin ended up falling in about 1897 when britain invaded it and made it a colony anyway although they put up a ridiculously good fight because by 1897 mostly everybody was already a colony already or done fought off a colony they were just coming a colony okay like it, it's insane they put up a very 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 good fight but in the end they still ended up being slaves and if you know anything about africa if you know anything about history to this day them selling their own people has greatly diminished their economy in more ways than anyone can even explain like african history culture politics like y'all see me talk about haitian history and politics if i ever start getting into these african countries we're gonna be sitting here for literally at least 20 years it doesn't make sense how corrupt and ridiculous these things are and it all leads back to the transatlantic slave trade believe it or not it does before you sit here and you listen to a whole bunch of fucking white colonizers that are tired of being blamed for the same thing that they ought to fucking feel bad for that they're still benefiting from today remember look it up don't just take shit for face value okay research don't just sit here and watch a movie and expect it to educate you especially because it's a hollywood movie and it's going to be heavily embellished so let's get into the movie so the first thing i have to say like i said i loved the movie it was amazing i thought it had enough fight scenes i, I saw a lot of people saying oh i didn't have enough fight scenes whatever i'm like i don't know i like the fight scenes i thought all of them were really really good and some of them were a little gory i couldn't watch it i loved the music that was in there i loved the fact that they were singing and dancing and all of that and i loved the storyline to an extent there were some things that were just a little out of place a little love story but let, let's be real it, it's not a hollywood story if there's not a love story especially a misplaced one so what am i supposed to say like to be honest i didn't care for that part like they we, we could have did without it and put something else there okay but it was a very very good movie and i do suggest everyone goes to see it with an open mind okay because to be honest if i would have known what i know today in terms of people trying to boycott and things like that i probably would have watched it with a different lens but since i watched it not knowing all of the fucking hoopla i think i enjoyed it a lot more so the woman king is based on an all-woman tribe that did exist in modern day benin which back in the day was called naomi they were referred to as the agoji or minu which means our mothers now when it came to the agoji just like in the movie you are not allowed to touch the agoji you're not allowed to look at the agoji okay the agoji were next to royalty okay and when it comes to the class structure back in the day it was literally like the higher up like the king things like that it was the commoner and then it was the slave all right so agoji right next to the king the agoji actually existed from about 1600 to 1904 so not that long ago when you think about it before you guys keep going on with this video understand i can't say shit right i can't even say a lot of things in crayon right i mean no disrespect and trying to look up how to say these words i still couldn't figure it out so forgive me the agoji the tribe was actually thought to begin in 1645 or 1685 during the reign of King, forgive me, Hab, wow. Hui Baja. I hope I'm saying that right. Or in the early 1700s. No one's really sure where exactly they came from. Another theory is that they could have been formed during Queen Hungby's reign during 1708 to 1711. Mainly because during her reign, no men were allowed in the palace. Kind of like when you see in the movie, they had their own little area and only women could be accepted there. It's kind of the same type of synopsis that happened when Queen Hungby was in the palace she did not want any men there they could not be any men there therefore having a woman militia was very very necessary in terms of having them there for them to report to her and things like that because men just weren't allowed in the palace so of course why woman that's a question that i think a lot of people have so a lot of people think that they had an all woman militia is mainly because one that's actually something a lot of people wouldn't be afraid of okay a lot of people would see a bunch of women and they're like what the fuck they about to do so that's one two there was a lot of casualties back then lots of wars lots of you know civil fighting all types of shit so a lot of the men were either going into battle dying in battle people were dying of diseases and things like that so there weren't two 
too many men available that could fight in military. Another theory about where the Agoji may have came from is that they probably came from the Gibito. Now the Gibito were actually a trained group of women hunters that they think later transformed into the Agoji. So when it comes to the movie, what parts are real, what parts are fake? To be honest, I don't want to say anything was necessarily real or fake. It just seems like a lot of things were heavily exaggerated or just left out, right? So when it came to the Agoji, a lot of things that guys saw in the movie was actually true. Everybody was afraid of the Agoji. Some of those women have been trained to fight since they were at least at the youngest reported was about eight years old. So y'all already know if you've been training to fight, shit, but yet training to kill since she was eight. Yeah, it's a wrap for that. Okay. So when it came to them, they were literally one of the most important, vital, essential pieces to the Daomi kingdom, because at this point they were getting attacked by all sides. And when it came to recruits, just like in the movie, you see Naoi who gets dropped off by her parents because she doesn't want to marry a man. And then, you know, she joins the Agoji tribe and then she starts flirting with some colonizer, but not colonizer because he's mixed and he actually is a good guy. It's a whole thing. Like I said, the love story is so misplaced. But basically, as you guys saw in that film, how basically she got dumped at their doorstep and then she became a warrior. That's how a lot of people joined the Agoji tribe. Okay. A lot of women were just dumped there by their families. Some of them were prisoners before and then they trained them to fight for the kingdom and it became a oneness mindset like listen you were a prisoner we did take you from wherever the fuck you was from we may have killed some of the people that you love now but you agoji now point blank period you gonna fight they were very accepting on that front in terms of you know training whoever it is that was there to be part of the militia that they had were they allowed to get married now this is something that i literally wanted to know because i'm like there's absolutely no way but then it makes perfect sense because love is very very distract okay like i'm not gonna lie when you love people when you fall in love romantically it is distracting it, it does kind of blur the lines for a lot of things so in the film you see you know no husbands no kids no nothing like they're strictly forbidden to do anything with anyone they're celibate or whatever the case may be so realistically in real life the agoji were actually formally married to the king do with that what you will i don't know if they was bugging the king or not i don't want to know i didn't even explore that any further when it came to trainings brutal if you did watch the movie you would have saw that one scene where literally Igozi, which I loved her character. I was so sad when she died. But anyways, when Igozi was literally doing like this whole spear strength match thing with a man and she won against the man. Cha. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Uh-uh. Would it be me? <laughs> Not I. Like, so yeah, I got time. So basically, their trainings were on some life or death type trainings, okay? Like literally, like you y'all out here doing spear to heart training. And from what I heard and what I looked up, the training for this movie was actually real. Like this wasn't no fake shit. There was no real like stunt doubles for most of these scenes. Like they were actually out here doing the shit. <laughs> okay, like they were doing the damn thing. So shout out to all the actors, okay, and all the actresses in this movie because there's absolutely no way I would have been out here doing all this shit. Like it, I, I just can't. Yes, the film was actually filmed in Africa as well. Um, that's also something I know a lot of people were like, is this really in Africa? Yeah, it was filmed in South Africa. Is Viola's character Nani Sky real? Not really. This character was based on a colonizer's diary. That's the best way to explain it. And I have to read this off of my notes, okay? While she appears to be mostly entirely fictional, French naval officer Jean Bayol, who visited the region in December 1889, wrote of watching a teenager recruit named Naniska, who had not yet killed anyone. He describes her approaching a young prisoner sitting bound in a basket. Naniska took her sword in both hands and swung three times, almost entirely decapitating the prisoner. She then cut the remaining bit of flesh that held the head to the trunk and squeezed the blood off her weapon and swallowed it. While Viola Davis's character is much older, it's possible her her name was inspired by the teenage Naniska, the French officer observed. Y'all sitting here going with this narrative. Meanwhile, they're literally sitting here reading Colonizer. Yes, I said Colonizer. I don't give a fuck. The French, they ain't no friends to me. Colonizer diaries and, and, and taking names and shit from them to make this film. I said again, I like the film, but there's certain things that need to be taken into consideration. You should have just saw this film for entertainment, not to be taken literally. <laughs> like, I, I was like, 
like, really? Like, I really watched that film thinking Nani Scott was somewhat real. Like, she was amazing. I will say Viola Davis did a very good job. Did the Agoji actually win every fight all the time? Nah, sometimes they got their ass beat. Most of the time they didn't. But sometimes they got their ass beat, especially when weapons started to advance, okay? Weapons started to get real, real serious out there. You can't fight with hands and feet for that long, y'all. Can win a couple battles, but can you win a war with hands and feet? I don't know. Especially when it comes to, you know, 12,000, 20,000, 50,000 people pulling up to your land. I don't know. I don't believe they had that many Algoji, okay? As their numbers grew, so did the colonizers pulling up to Africa to collect more people. And over time, you know, they didn't have that many prisoners anymore because they kind of just grew and grew and grew. And I guess they kind of wanted to do other things for trade and things like that. Yeah, it was only certain that eventually they would fall. But one thing to note is that even on the battlefield, everybody respected that Agoji, okay? There's so many journal entries of people talking about the Agoji and how fierce they were, how brave they were, how professional they were, whether they were winning, whether they were losing. Like, it's very interesting and very, very admirable. And that's something they should have showcased in the film because all that extra fluff wasn't necessarily necessary. I'm like, that's something I would have loved to see because you don't necessarily see people like win a war, win a battle, and they're sitting there like, yo, yeah, you know, we, we kicked their asses. But, yo, they was lit. You know, they were really good. They, they fought with skill. They fought with integrity. But, yeah, we, we beat their ass, but they were really great. <laughs> like, that's what a lot of these colonizers had to say about that Goji. So, apparently, 6,000 Daomi female warriors went into, I need to read this, okay, because Jesus Christ, Abeokuta, in order to obtain slaves for the Daomi slave trade. We don't know what the real reason is, but, you know, of course, we, we have to take this one with a grain of salt. And, sadly, all they had was swords and, and spears and bows. By this time, let's just say, the Europeans, they, they they, they had cannons, okay? So a lot of them did not survive. Only 1,200 of them made it out. Like I said, they walked in with 6,000. So that's just something that, you know, you gotta take into account. You know, were they out here kicking ass? Yes. Were they fierce and brave and all of that? Yes. But it's like, um, sometimes you lose, okay? You win some, you lose some. And that was a heavy loss for them. Were there any men in the Agoji? No. Straight women. No men. They fought alongside men. They were kind of part of the other, you know, militia and defense forces but they were their own thing and what's very interesting I did see a journal entry that was like they said they were men not women and I was like you gotta take a lot of things that you see sometimes with a grain of salt because just like there's another entry that I saw or something a piece of information that basically said that um you know was it the British yeah the British were the ones that made Daomi or Benin basically stop trading slaves I don't believe that shit either there's certain things you gotta kind of question when it's white people writing your story you have to remember like um but why though you always have to question but why but how because certain things just don't make sense were sacrifices really a thing for the Agoji tribe of course there were we're talking about Africa okay this is the motherland sacrifices voodoo mother religion that's a thing and sacrifices are a thing sometimes human sometimes animal back then definitely lots of human it was estimated that at least 500 people were sacrificed each year in efforts to bring a good fortune to the Agoji tribe of course that's kind of horrible because what the fuck where did these 500 people come from but hey I hate to be an asshole here but clearly it didn't help that much that's all I gotta say. That, that's some gruesome shit. Is King Agizo real? Yeah, he was actually real. But this whole slave trade narrative was not necessarily that bad. Like the whole slave trade situation was not that bad until after he left. So that part is kind of inaccurate in the movie as well. However, he was responsible for expanding the Agoji military. Because like literally when he was king, they went from like literally 600 to 6,000. So that's something he could be thanked for. Daomi also partook in a lot of very um unsuccessful wars that led to them becoming a colony as well okay so of course we have 1897 with britain they were defeated by the french in 1894 and became a colony and then shortly after in 1897 they were taken over by britain so they put up a good fight now when it comes to king gizzo though he'll look controversial okay he rose to kingdom hood <laughs> or whatever the case may be um with a coup okay with the help of 
of a Brazilian slave trader named Francisco Felix de Sousa. Of course, that's problematic as hell. Like, you literally had a slave trader help you rise to be a king. Like I said, if we were to get into Africa's history and politics, I'd literally probably be sitting here for 20 years just getting into Benin. That would probably take me a year of coverage in itself. But that is just a, a tidbit of what the fuck. So that's something that they kind of touched on in the movie, um, but it, it's so glanced over that people kind of like don't really pay attention to it. But basically there was a comment where one of um, Gizzle's wives were like, oh, why is she always bringing Naniska here? She's always dirty, da 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 And there is someone else in the palace. I don't know if he, I, I, I'm not sure what his name was. I don't remember. But basically he was like, well, she helped him get into power. What did you do? You you hid in a cupboard. And it was hilarious. Cause like the way he said it, cause he was also gay. And he was just like, you hid in the cupboard. You know, so it was like, yeah, like that's crazy. So I'm very sure they were referring to this coup that definitely made him, you know, king. Of course he had the goji, but he also had, uh, you know, this slave trader there to help him get right on up there. And that's also a form of manipulation that a lot of people need to understand. And this is something that happens in Haiti to this day. A lot of very powerful countries or countries that have interest in certain countries will sit there and they put different people in power to use as puppets, to use when they need certain things. I'm very sure they put him in power because they know that he would have been okay with slave trading, okay? Not saying that the slave trade did not take place when he was a king. It just was not that bad until after he left. But while he was there, it was still taking place, okay? So in the movie, it's very much so we don't want to sell our own people. We won't do that. And Naniska, which is the main character that I just touched on, has this whole, we can sell palm oil. We don't have to sell our people. That is ridiculously inaccurate. They were definitely out here stealing people to sell so their heads wouldn't roll. <laughs> okay? that That's some real shit. That's, that's literally what was happening. I'm never going to sit here and say that's not what was happening because that's what was happening. Um, They were not the good guys, but let's be real, nobody's the good guys in these situations. The colonizers are ridiculously horrible for sitting here going into other people's lands continuously just trying to expand their missions and then tricking all these people that they thought were less than into selling their own people bitch sell your own fucking people which they did so it's just like listen it's a lot okay it's a lot everybody was very barbaric back in the day let's just all agree that it was very very barbaric um and for the most part it is a history that needs to be acknowledged okay it's very uncomfortable to talk about but it doesn't need to be acknowledged it's santo Ferreira real okay so he was the slave trader that was out here trying to buy black slaves but you know he had that portuguese speaking brazilian friend who was basically falling in love with naui and um yeah he was basically the villain of the story was he a real character to be quite honest nobody really knows but he could have been loosely based on francisco de Sousa. Apparently in real life he actually wasn't that bad, but he did help King Gizzle come into power and in return King Gizzle made him the chief principal trade official at the port of Waida. Waida? Waida? Waida. I hope I'm saying that right. Now the De Sousa family became very very wealthy and very very like affluent during this reign. I'm not sure where they at now. I would love to know. Okay, I, I would love to know. That would be something to definitely look into, but I, I don't know what happened to them after King Gizzle. I'm back on it because we all know what happens when kingdoms fall and then new people come into order and then people get killed exiled all of that but very interesting shit so you know what's funny when you look at all of these articles it's like all the white people that are mentioned in this movie they're like no what they weren't even that bad in real life this is what they were really doing but then everything else that's black they weren't really the good guys like i said be very very careful i'm gonna link all my sources down below um and no particular order guys no particular order no particular anything i want you guys to check who wrote these articles when you're reading them because when i was reading my notes for for this video like after my sister wrote them i was so fucking lost i was like why the fuck does this shit sound weird like it was like it was just so one-sided you know so always always make sure that where you're getting your shit is not biased okay not biased at all but when it comes to felix i actually did look into that apparently he really wasn't that bad but like i mean slave trading key component of slave trading i mean that's not great um and also by no means am i saying that africans were innocent but i am gonna say that at the end of the day we're not gonna sit here and vilify you know africans and 
and forget what the fuck white people did. This is not what we about to do. Now, was Nawi a real person? Was she legit alive at one point? Apparently, the real Nawi was actually interviewed to make this movie. She was interviewed in 1978, a year prior to her death. So very, very sad. Crazy that there was actually still an Agoji warrior still living and I didn't get to meet her. I'm actually really mad about that, but whatever. It is what it is. But yeah, they actually interviewed her, you know, and I believe that her interview is what really inspired this movie and inspired that character. She claimed that she fought in the second franco Dalmian War in 1892. However, if you guys are paying attention to the dates, Naomi would not have been able to possibly been alive during King Gazel's reign because that was from 1818 to 1859. So yeah, of course, they had to move shit around. To make it interesting. What type of weapons did the Agoji use? So for the most part in the beginning the Agoji had regular spears and things like that but eventually they updated to guns, bayonets, rifles, bows and arrows like they they became real skilled over the time and ended up getting weapons that they got from the trades with Europeans and used those in wars. Of course some had knives, some had clubs like they was out here they, they had every type of weapon imaginable they had different wings they had a left wing, a right wing, and a fonty wing, and each of them were specialized in certain weapons. So how long did the Agoji actually last? So it's actually believed that the Agoji lasted till about 1904 and then they were officially disestablished, which is incredible when you really think about it. It's like, god damn, that's a lot of people to be like fighting for that long. And that's a long time to be actually, you know, fighting and then training and actually actually defending your land so big ups to them okay because a lot of other warriors ain't last that long all right at all now we only say 1904 like I said in this video most of us now know that in about the 1890s that's when colonization kind of came into fruition so they were mostly phased out but it is rumored that a lot of the former Agoji basically trained their children how to fight and to be honest I want to meet somebody like, does anybody know any Agoshi? Like, that is lit. Okay, that is lit. Like, oh my god. I want to meet one. Did the Agoji actually inspire the Black Panther? If you guys are not aware or you guys don't remember, there was an all-woman special forces in Black Panther. Black Panther is actually, like, literally one of my favorite movies. And they actually were inspired by the Agoshi. So, overall, no. That movie is not historically accurate. Okay, let's, let's be real. Okay, The Woman King is not historically accurate. No, I do not think that Africans were a hundred percent innocent in these slave trades and no I do not think that it is okay to be sitting here shaming this movie or saying that you're not gonna go see this movie because of some shit that you saw on Twitter or because you loosely look some shit up and now you're turned off by it understand you always have to do your own research never ever 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 expect Hollywood to educate you on your own history and when it comes to white people a lot of them are legitimately fucking right racist they just don't know it and it's insane because just reading a lot of the commentary on this not even reviews okay because if you don't like the movie you don't like the movie but just the reviews about oh well this movie glorifies the slave trade shut the fuck up your life glorifies the slave trade how about that we could get into that your privilege glorifies the slave trade how about that i don't understand why more people aren't calling this out but i literally sat here and i looked into a lot of these writers okay that wrote a lot of these articles about the woman king and i was like mm -hmm. white white not black white white cute you may work at howard but bitch not black and on top of that this it's harmful. It's harmful, period. They do everything to divide us, but nothing to educate us on the truth. Go to the edu websites, go to the .org websites, dig, 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 dig. Don't go to page one, two, three, go to page five, six, eight. Skip around because there's a lot of things that they don't want us to know. If you're gonna go see the movie, see it as entertainment, not as a history lesson.
lesson. I don't think the movie was supposed to be a history lesson. You want a fucking history lesson? You go watch a documentary. Okay, I'm very sick and tired of people thinking that a movie from Hollywood is going to educate them about anything. And let's also be real that a lot of us, when we see a all black cast or a black based movie and slavery is mentioned, we always say, I don't want to see the gory bouts of slavery and I don't want to see anything regarding the trauma that my ancestors went through. They gave us that. They really did. So kudos to the writers for that. Kudos to the writers for that. I think they did a good job with how they wrote this movie. I'm not even gonna say I, I I took the movie for what it was. But for whatever reason, niggas wanna take shit and, and, and flip shit. For what? What the fuck do y'all want? Do y'all want the gory slavery shit or don't you? Y'all need to make up your damn minds. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you guys so much for enjoying Vlogtober. On your way out, make sure you slap that subscribe button, smash that like button, smash every button, you know, that can help a sister out. Subscribe to the other channels. Peep the description box, get your merchandise, and I'm gonna see y'all next time. Bye!